What's going on everyone? This is Let's Talk About It with Aaron E. That's me and this is my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about HDR photography. HDR photography is a little bit different than an HDR TV. Even though it shares similar principles, still is a little bit different. When it comes to HDR TV, um, 4K is a 4K TV, which is 4,000, 4,000 times the resolution of 1080. That has to deal with the sharpness. And then HDR has to do with the 3D look of your TV, it, how the foreground pops from the background um, and how just that surreal look, how that, that real sharpness comes into play. When it comes to photography, it shares a similar aspect, but it's a little bit different. In photography, HDR photography, once again, high dynamic range, takes three elements. It takes the low light, the medium light, and a high light. So it takes underexposed, a regular photo, and an overexposed photo. And it takes all the values of those photographs and combines it into one photograph. When we photograph a regular photo, it's going to have X amount of values of light and color in it. And if you take a photograph in a cave, you might be able to see some of the cave, but it might seem really dark. If you're like, well, let's try to make the cave a lot brighter, you're going to up the exposure value in your photograph in the camera, and it's going to take a much brighter photo. And then it might be too bright. But the thing with that is in a really dark photo, you're going to be missing the color values and it's not, it's going to be hard to see. When you make a really, really bright photo, it's too bright. And so everything's overexposed. You might be exposing the shadows in the background that you couldn't see from before, but it's too bright. So this takes a balance of medium, low and light values, and it combines them together to bring out the best of a photograph. Now, this doesn't mean it is the best photograph. It just means that it's giving you what we normally can't see in different types of photography. So this is meant to look fake. It's meant to look overdone. It's meant to look 3D and pop out at you. And by doing so is allowing the values of underexposed and overexposed combined into one photograph to give us that 3D look. So I'm going to screen share my um, Photoshop with you so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using an old Photoshop CS6. Um, it's going to look slightly different on the new Photoshop, but the principles are the same. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope this is uh, easy for you to understand. Always leave a comment below if you want me to over, ever go over something and uh, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Helps me out so I can give you new content. So hope you enjoy this video. And now I'm going to explain to you how an HDR photograph is made. All right, guys. So I wanted to be able to show you how I make an HDR photograph. So I'm going to open up CS6, which is um, an older version of Photoshop, but for demoing purposes, I'm just showing you how we make an HDR photo. So I'm gonna highlight my three photos in Bridge, and this is going to open up the raw editor. Now typically you can use Lightroom, it's usually way easier, but once again, I'm just showing you the 101 of photography. So I've got my three photographs here, this is the main photo, this is my focus point, this is the darker photo, this is the lighter photo. I want everything to revolve around this photograph. So I'm gonna do just some things that aren't necessary to HDR photography, but this is just something I always do. I like to auto-correct my lens distortion and I like to up my sharpness on my photograph. So I'm gonna add a little bit more detail into this, um, but I actually want to add a little more luminance into this just because the amount of my sharpening, I don't want it to be, um, I want to get a little more detail, but I don't want it to be too grainy. So that is why I am adding a little bit of sharpness. Whenever you add sharpness to the photograph, technically it adds grain to the photograph. So now what I want to do is I'm going to keep this as shot. Once again, I've got my lens correction. I did my sharpness. Um, and now I've got the basic editing. So I'm going to keep this as shot just to show you what happens when you hit auto. I think it takes away some of the blue. I could go into the editing and change it here, but I'm just going to leave this as shot. Now, right now, I'm going to hit auto and I'm going to show you what auto automatically does. This made this photograph really, really bright. 
I don't want it to be really bright. As you can see, this change in value, this is the histogram. You want for the main photograph everything to be more in the center, which it kind of is, but it's a little bit bright. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring down that brightness. I'm going to bring it back to the center. And I'm going to bring up my value just a little bit. I want to keep on going more, keep on going more. So this is kind of where I want it to be for um, the brightness of the main photograph. Um, you want it as best as center as you can because eventually you're going to have your dark photo to be more on the left and your really bright photo to be more towards the right. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. So right now I'm just editing how I want the main photograph to be. So once again, the lens correction, the sharpness, and <clears throat> excuse me. Um, now I'm going through the basic editing of the photograph. My contrast is where I want it to be. My highlights are a little bit different, so I kind of want to bring it down a little bit because the highlights are what's going to be truly shown in HDR photography. So I'm going to tone it down a little bit because it is going to bring it back up. Same with the sh shadows. I kind of want to darken a little bit because the next two photographs are going to up the shadow intensity. My whites, the photograph's not too bad. I'm going to make it a teeny bit darker, and I just want to make my blacks just a teeny bit darker. Now, this has nothing to do with HDR. I just like to always change this in my photographs. I always like to add my clarity, my vibrance, and my saturation. Um, as you can see from adding that, being a lot darker, it just kind of makes more blues go into the photograph. It adds more color. It makes it a little bit more vibrant, if you will. Hence why we have vibrance. So this is how I want my main photograph to look. Actually, I want it to be just a slight bit darker. So I'm going to go here. So now, since I've gone through all of these, as far as basically it's called the local editing, the main editing, now what I want to do is I want to take all the photographs and I want them to have the same edit. So I hit select all over here. I hit synchronize. I click on settings over here and I hit everything. And then I'm going to hit OK. So now what it does is it takes all of these values, all of these settings I did, and it copies it to this photograph and this photograph. Now, to me, this photograph is a little bit too dark. Um, and then if I tried to put this back to the center point, it becomes extremely dark. Now, the only advantage to this is I can see more detail in the darks and the shadows here and here. But this is just a little bit too dark. It's completely creeping up on the left. I want to maybe make it just a little bit brighter. So I'm adding in a little bit light, a little bit light. I want to get a little bit of detail out of it. So that's going to be my dark photograph. So this is the ultralight photograph. So once again, let me back up. This once again is generally more in the middle. My dark, my dark photograph is more towards the left. So now I want to take my bright photograph and I want to make this histogram, all these values go a little bit more towards the right. Now if I just crank it all the way to the right, Okay, that tells me it's creeping up this portion, but this is just too bright. This is going to make it look way too funny. Just by looking at it right now, I can see these kind of weird shadows in here. And even though we want that to be a part of HDR, when I actually make the HDR photograph, it's going to seem too weird. So I'm going to back this down a bit. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. And a little bit more, a little bit more here. So this is still brighter than the original photograph. So you've got a medium photograph, an ultra dark photograph, and an ultra light photograph. This is what is going to bring out the detail in an HDR photo. So now I'm going to take these three photographs, hit select all, and then I'm going to actually open them in Photoshop. So that's step one. Step two is basically editing each photograph but in Photoshop, it actually does it for me, which is kind of really, really cool. So I'm going to go, here's my three photographs. This tells me that nothing has been worked on the photograph yet, but you're about to see that if I do type of editing, it shows my history here. Once I start to do the HDR photograph, it's going to show me a ton of work that's automatically being done to the photo, and that's what makes it really, really cool. So I'm going to click on file. Sorry, I'm going to click on file. I'm going to go to automate right here and I'm going to go to merge to HDR Pro and I'm going to open up the three photographs. So I say add open files and then hit OK. If not, you could search for the files, but I just made it easy because I have all three files open. So now it looks a little glowy, but 
it's brought in the detail that I want. Up here, you can hit remove ghosts. Um, sometimes it works to your advantage, sometimes it works to a disadvantage. For the somewhat people, excuse me, that you could see over here, it's kind of hard to see, but that's because they were moving. It actually captured their blurriness when they were moving. So if I hit remove ghosts, it actually tries to align them to the best they can. But in my opinion, I think it kind of made it worse. So I'm actually going to leave it off. Um, actually, nah, I'm going to leave it off. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my edge smoothness, activate that, and I'm just going to up my strength on the overall uh, clarity, if you will. And now I'm going to take my clarity on my gamma. Here, I think it's a little too glowy, so I'm going to drop that just a little bit. And then I'm going to drop my exposure just a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to up my detail. A little too much detail, so I'm going to drop back it off a little bit. I'm going to take my shadows, drop them a little bit here. I'm going to take my highlights, drop them a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to up my vibrance and I want to up my saturation. So these are the basic editing, how I want my photograph to look. So this is step one. I'm going to hit OK. And then what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to take this photograph and turn it. As you can see, it's, it's working its magic. It's turning it into an HDR photograph. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my HDR photograph. I'm going to say Image, come over here to Adjustments, and then HDR Toning. This is how I can really make the nitty gritty and the pop of the photograph. It automatically kind of made it too bright, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit in my exposure value. And then what I want to do is I want to up my details. So now I'm starting to see that HDR, I'm starting to see that pop. Um, and that's what I want to get out of my photograph. I want to bring down my shadows, bring down my highlights, bring up my vibrance, and I'm going to bring up my saturation a little bit. Kind of makes it a little bit more 3D. Actually, I'm going to drop a little because the yellows were getting a little too much. And I'm going to up my exposure just a little bit. So now, this is my HDR photograph. That's how it looked before. This is how it looks after. I'm going to drop my exposure just a little bit. Oh, there we go. So this is my HDR photograph. Now I'm going to compare it to the original photograph, which is that. Still a really cool photo, but these portions, these legs supporting the bridge are a little bit dark. It's not bad and it's an interesting photograph, but soon as I do my HDR photo, it makes all of that detail pop. And that's the cool thing about the HDR photograph is that in a too dark of a photograph, I can see these lights really well, but I can't see the real rest of my image. I can't really get tell what's going on. Um, other than this portion of it, I would tell it's a bridge. If I couldn't see this, you wouldn't know it's a bridge. If I go to the overexposed photograph, oh yeah, I can tell it's a bridge. I can see all this detail, but it's a little too bright. It's kind of hurting my eyes. And in this photograph, once again, it's normal, but okay, great. Once again, if I want to get that 3D-ness, that's where I can take each photograph, put them together, and then get this 3D photo. The last thing I would do is I'd go back into my adjustments. I can go into my hue saturation, and then I could always add more color to it. Um, drop down my lightness a little bit. So this is having less saturation, this is having more saturation, and then it kind of just makes it pop a little bit more in the color. So I say OK on that, and then the last thing I want to be able to do is my yellows are a little bit too yellow. So I want to be able to go into the actual color of the photograph itself and change a little bit aspect of the color. So I'm going to go into selective color, I'm going to go into my yellows, and then on here, I'm just going to ever so slightly drop my yellows a little bit more. Bring this back to normal because I like it there. And so now I just feel like the yellow isn't overpowering itself. Bring it up a 
a little more. And so therefore to me, I think it makes it seem a little bit better and not too overdone. Oops, a little bit, a little bit darker. And I'm going to say OK. So now, that was my original photograph. This is an HDR photo. So once again, this is meant to make your photograph look 3D. Are you going to do this every single time? No. This is just something creative and fun you can do with your photographs in Photoshop to get an HDR photo. Um, so I just wanted to be able to showcase to you how this works because um, I have the most fun making these types of photographs. And so I just wanted to showcase how it's done. Um, so this is, once again, the most simplistic or the basic way to make an HDR photograph in Photoshop. But now these days with the new Photoshop, with the new Lightroom, this is actually a heck of a lot easier. I just kind of wanted to be able to show you the 101 of HDR building in Photoshop and how I've made my HDR photos. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video on HDR photography. Please hit that like and subscribe button down below. Helps me out in a big way. That way I can continue to give you more content. The next video coming out I'm going to have for you is actually a collage of these HDR photographs that I have personally made. Um, so it's something that I think is really, really cool. You could always leave a comment down below on, oh, hey, can you either send me more info about this photograph or whatnot? And I'll gladly do so. Um, but once again, this is HDR photographs that I've made. Some people might say, oh, they look too overdone. Um, but it's your own opinion. Um, I purposely have made some of these overdone because I'm printing them on metal and glass. When you've seen my intro videos and you saw me on my couch, um, the photograph that was behind me was an HDR photograph, but it was overdone on purpose because it was printed on metal and glass. So not all HDR photographs have to look overdone. You can make them less 3D, um, but I just chose to for the photographic purposes um, on what I have, they are a little bit overdone. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's just some people can be controversial on, oh, they like it or they don't like it. That's fine. Um, it's just kind of what I've done. I'm showcasing it to you just so you can see some of my work. I'm going to have another video on non HDR photos, just showcasing regular photographs. So stay tuned for that as well. Hope you guys like this video. Once again, hit that like and subscribe button down below. Always helps me out so I can get you new content. And I look forward to you guys uh, checking out more videos on my channel. So hope you guys enjoy a great day and be safe out there.